So as usual, you begin with what you know, and what I know is the domain. Now that's a really good place to start in this example because look, um, the structure of the domain that you're restricted within looks very much like what you're trying to prove. Like this is less than this, which is less than that, right? So that's a good clue for you, right? So here's my proof. Um, I begin with this and I know it to be true. So now I think about what I need to do to build on this and make it more complicated to get to here, which I know is not the way we're usually thinking, but it's not that hard algebraically. So, easy thought, what's the very first thing you would do to everything? You would square, good. And you always have to do this between every line. Does squaring, because squaring you gotta be careful with, does it muck around with any of your inequalities? Do you lose any like endpoints, boundaries? Do the inequalities change direction? So far we're pretty safe, because this is all you're worried about that's variable, there's nothing else to deal with there. Okay, so now what might you do as your next step? You could go in a few different directions, right? Personally, I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm going to multiply everything by minus one. <laughs> okay, now, like I said, there's many different paths from here to here. You might not like the idea of reversing the inequalities, and actually, it's not nice to write it like this, because actually this means that t squared is outside, but as you will see in a second, the inequalities are gonna flip back the way that I want them to, okay? So, at this point, I've got a minus t squared. Why do you think I did that? Why do you think I went in that direction? It's because I have a minus t squared here. That's what I'm working toward, okay? So to get from here to here, my next step would be, I guess I add four to everything. Is that okay? Four here, four here, and four, uh, did I do this right? Why, why did that become minus two? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, that becomes a two. I'm adding four to every, every part of inequality. So far so good? All right, now, can you see what I'm about to do, right? I can divide through here. What should I divide through by? Because remember, I flipped all the inequalities backwards, right? Well, I can flip them back the right way if I take reciprocals of everything, right? <clears throat> if this becomes a quarter, this becomes 1 over 4 minus t squared, and this becomes a half. <laughs> Clearly, you can see now I've gone the other way around. Look, my big numbers are over here, and my smaller numbers are over here, right? So this is now the direction of my inequalities, OK? I'm very, very close to what I need. Look, I've got my one over four minus t squared there. The only difference is I need a two t squared there. I can multiply through everything by two t squared. Why is that? Because two t squared is positive, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, two t squared over here, that will leave me with t squared on two. Um, in the middle here, I get what I expected. And over here, I also get what I expected. But then you look at this and think, hmm, it's not quite, it's not quite right. <laughs> there's, there's something wrong over here, right? This, I want this to be zero. But that's no problem, is it? Here's the way that I would lay it out. You could do this a couple of different ways. I think this is the simplest. T squared on two is positive, right? It's positive. So therefore what I'm gonna just pop over here is, well, zero must be less than that. And that's less than that, and that's less than that. Okay, I think this is the easiest way to do it, rather than break out over here and say t squared is greater than zero and so on. I just keep it in my main, the main body of my argument. So if this is bigger than this, which is bigger than this, then this is bigger than all of them, right? And so I can cut this guy out, if you like. Like so. And that gets you to this result. So, when you have a look at part two, there are some clues for what direction you have to go in. The first clue is that you see, now don't worry about what variable it is, x's, t's, whatever. You got x cubed on three, or t cubed on three if you like, right? Now you can see, where, how would you get t cubed on three from t squared? And the answer is integrated. And you're confirmed by that when you think, oh, there's a log in here. Clearly that crept in because of some integration, right? So that's kind of your clue for where you would go from there. Let's try, let's try. <clears throat> so here's where I begin. You all identified correctly. Good work. This is actually what I took out, uh, and this is what makes a question harder. In order, when you're looking at HSC questions, right, I could make this question easier for you and therefore place it earlier in the paper and make it worth less marks if I held your hand a little more, right? In between here and here, there is actually a step, right? 
that makes it a little more obvious, or they could even tell you, you should get to here, to, from here to here by integration, okay? But you, you've seen enough inequalities to recognize, no, no, clearly there must be something going on, right? But the connection between this and this is not obvious, right? And you must settle it, not just for yourself, but for the sake of your proof, right? So for example, you have a look at this middle part here, right? I'll put it over here. If you've got this, <coughs> Right? How is it that this came from this? So if you're going from here to here by integrating, then in order to think backwards, then you would be differentiating, right? Now, what's the quickest way to get from there to there by differentiating? Well, if I just slap this on the front, right? If I asked you if this had nothing to do with inequalities, right? And you just had to differentiate that, what would you do? What would be the first thing that you do? You should take care of the log, right? Because gross, look at the chain rule you're going to get from that, right? You're going to have to pull that quotient. It's going to be a mess, right? So instead, you must remember, um, always manipulate algebra first before you differentiate or integrate or anything like that. So you can break this apart with your log laws, right? So you get this uh, minus this. And now you can differentiate and it's not so bad. Okay. So what are you going to get? You'll get 2 over 2 plus x from this. Double negative, <laughs> so you'll get 2 over 2 minus x from this, and you get 2 there. Okay. And now you, the cogs might start to turn, and you can see where this is going to come from. What's this? What's its relationship to that? It's, yeah, that's right. This is, it's partial fractions, really. This is the difference of squares, right? So you can simplify this a little bit and content yourself that you end up with 2x squared on 4 minus x squared, okay? Um, because that's a terrible four, because things cancel out quite neatly on the numerator. Okay, so, so far so good. So therefore, if you're gonna go from here to here, fine, you integrate, but there's a problem. I will very quickly show it to you, right? If you just integrate this, right? Or sorry, this rather, you've got zero d t, t. These are all t's, right? Now, when you integrate 0 with respect to t, you know that you don't get 0, right? Well, you might, but you don't know that you might. What would you really get? You get a constant, right? And this is kind of important. Not only is it the constant here, but it's here and here. You integrate with an indefinite integral, and you'll be stuck with the constant. And this is crucial to the proof. So think, think. What is a way to get rid of a constant? What is the only way to integrate with no constants? Answer? You need a definite integral of some kind. That's the only way to get rid of the constants everywhere. Okay. So then you have to think, well, what would be a convenient thing to choose? What would be convenient boundaries to choose that would give you a constant over here, right? Or would eliminate all these constants, but lead you to these x instead of t's? And based on what you've got, I think you would have to integrate from 0 to x. We, we looked at this under motion, right? When sometimes you go from some known value, like 2 up to v or something like that, which is unknown, right? So you need to think of these guys not just as, oh, I, they told me to go from here to here. But they are tools that you can use to get a result that you want, right? <laughs> okay, so now let's hit play. If I integrate everything with respect to t from 0 to x, okay? I'll start with the result I proved in part 1. Here's part 2. Okay, integrate everything. From 0 to x with respect to t. From 0 to x with respect to t. And one more time. Uh, oops, it's just t squared. Like so. Okay. So as we showed over here, right, really this thing in the middle is going to be this. So when you integrate that, right? as I'm trying to do here, what you're going to do is you're going to climb back up to here, which you can put together with log laws like so. Okay? So therefore, this side is going to become, well, I mean, you can think of it like this, but it's going to be a constant minus a constant. Right? Um, up here, you're going to get from, you're going to get this line. From 0 to x, don't forget, at this point I'm still all in terms of t's, because that's what I integrated with respect to. But once I sub in all of my boundaries, <coughs> things will all disappear, will collapse. Okay. And then what have I got over here? Um, t 
t cubed from 0 to x. Okay, so once you sub <coughs> everything in, you do have to be careful with this thing because it is a show proof, right? But eventually it will be nice and neat. You'll get your zero over here. You'll get your, where am I trying to go? Um, you'll get these guys, 2 plus x on 2 minus x, and this t will become an x. You don't have to worry about the zero boundary, it will disappear, right? By the way, if you're wondering, yes? Yeah? Is it x? Where? C. Here. Yeah. It's just a constant. So it's constant minus a constant. Right? So it becomes zero. Yes? There's, it's, not, it's not C times T, it's just C. Right? I mean, if you want to think about it this way, right? What are you integrating? You're integrating, you're integrating this. What's that line look like? It looks like this. And you're finding the area under the curve between zero and x. And that area happens to be zero. All right, and then over here you get your x cubed on 3 as required. 